Welcome in. It's Tuesday, April 20th on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thomas Miller with you. Thanks for joining us. We've got a listener question today, and it's a really good one. If you're interested in your own chart in astrology, this question is going to be great. And we'll let Bianca ask her question here in just a quick sec. I wanted to go over a couple of the placements today. First of all, as mentioned yesterday, we are waking up this morning to a Leo moon. So there could be a little bit of that roar. You might want to just go out on a flat rock and look out over the tundra and let her rip. And seriously, what that is about is there is a reflection of you over the next two days that if you have something that you need to move you forward, perfect time to do it. And I'll give you an example. I watched a YouTube video last night of David Muir. He's the guy that anchors the world news tonight. And it was about his getting started in broadcasting and how he went to this little television station in Syracuse, New York, as a 12-year-old because he wanted to be on television. He interned there for all of high school and into college, and then they hired him to be an anchor of the evening news on the weekends, and then his career went on from there. But at the end of the video, he said exactly what the moon in Leo is. He said, do what you need to do, do the grunt work, get yourself started, but most importantly, put yourself out there. And that's what the moon in Leo is all about. So if there's something where you today could put yourself out there to be recognized or just to put yourself out in the space, there is energy today and tomorrow for you to do that. Now, there is one other that is of worth note. 7.44 a.m. this morning, Eastern Time, Venus is semi-square to Neptune. So that's a 45-degree aspect. So where is Neptune? If you've been listening to this for any period of time, Pisces at home, right, until 2025. That question has the same answer <laughs> for the next four years. Where's Venus? Ah, listen, yesterday, Taurus at home. But they're in this little bit of cranky uh, acknowledgement of each other. So they want to work together. They want to bring things up. What could that look like? Well, Venus, relationships, Neptune, dreamy, ethereal, convoluted perspective, cloudy, foggy vision. That's the shadow side reflected by the semi-square aspect. So if you're in a relationship, romantic, business, any kind of relationship, employee, employer, also falls under relationship. Let's don't forget, look at any relationship in your life, and there could be some cloudy fogginess over the next two days around that. And we've been feeling it for a couple of days, too. So if you've noticed some challenges in that area over the weekend and bringing it on in here to the early part of the week, and it might residual on out as the aspect separates. But that one could be worth just saying, you know what, let's give this a couple of days and let's think about it. All right. Now, I want to get to this so we have time to answer Bianca's wonderful question from Detroit, Michigan, Motor City and Motown. Here is Bianca. Hi, Thomas. I just wanted to say thank you for your podcast. I found it about four months ago, and it's been really helpful as I am embarking on my astrology journey. Uh, my question has to do with something you said on March 10th, and I've heard other astrologers say this before, is that you can look in your chart for a strong planet. Uh, March 10th, you referenced, if you look at, say, for example, a strong Neptune, you might see a proclivity for addiction or, or something like that. And I was wondering, how can you tell if you have a strong planet? Thank you. Oh, Bianca, you are precious. Thank you for listening, and I love that. Thank you. Okay, strong planet. There are a couple of things to look for. First of all, what's your rising sign? Find the rising sign, which is the cusp of the first house. That was the point of sunrise on the day you were born. The ruling planet of that sign rules your chart, so it is definitely a strong planet. How do you find this out? Well, you have to at least know the glyphs. So if you know nothing about astrology, here's what you would do. Go online and get the glyphs, all right? So just search astrology glyphs and go to the images and you'll get them all, okay? Then call up your chart on one of the free services, astro.com, astro-seek.com is another great one. Call up your chart 
and it probably will tell you in there, but look for the first house. It's on the left. It's at the nine o'clock position. And then, like I say, if you're just learning astrology, great. That's really kind of what this podcast is for. This podcast is not for astrologers. This podcast is for you who are just trying to live your life, run your day, manage your kids, go to your job, and know what's going on up in the sky and quickly. So match the glyphs to the first house. So that will give you your rising sign. Or if you're in those programs, it probably will tell you your ascendant. It's the, that's the other term is the ascendant. Now, I'm going to use mine as an example to show you the process. So, first of all, my rising sign is Gemini. Now we're going to find the ruling planet. So go back to Google and just type in ruler of Gemini astrology. That's your keyword. And that will give you your ruling planet. That planet basically rules your chart and your life. So it is kind of the predominant theme throughout. Mercury rules Gemini. So go figure, communication. I'm kind of like David Muir. I just didn't elevate to the world news tonight path, but I did my own path and it has been in the world of communications. I took a couple of detours and honestly, those didn't work out. So I've stayed aligned and those areas where I have been in this field of broadcast or communications have been successful. Why? Because Mercury rules the chart. Now, the other way to notice a strong planet is how it is either positioned or aspected. So any planet in its own sign also is very strong in your chart. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say Mercury and Gemini, or if your sun is in Leo, or let's say your moon is in Cancer. Those are home-based planets. Let's say you have Jupiter in Sagittarius. That's a real good rabbit's foot in your pocket right there. If you've got Jupiter in Sagittarius... You can stretch the limits. You, you can get away with some stuff. How about Venus, Venus in Taurus or Venus in Libra? See, those are strong positions. So if you have a planet in its own sign, that's a strong planet. The other thing is how it's aspected. Is it aspected favorably or is it aspected in a challenged way? But either way, that aspect is going to amplify that planet in your chart. And another thing is the good old stellium. We've been talking about the stellium in Aries. That stellium is now crowded into Taurus. So if you have three or more planets in a sign or a house, you have a stellium in your chart. And that is basically a nucleus of energy in its own. Sometimes it will drown out a lot of the other energy of the chart will be subservient to that stellium. So again, personal example, I have three planets in the sign of Scorpio in the fifth house of Placidus and the sixth house whole sign. And I know that's another rabbit trail we won't go down. But basically, I have three planets in Scorpio, Mars, the Sun, and Neptune. And what I got into astrology to do was to understand my stellium and how it affected my life. And now that I understand it, I see the intensity of those three planets in my life. And basically, you start to get okay with how you're wired. It's like I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday. I don't fit into those cookie-cutter slots. Uh, This particular thing was about the Myers-Briggs, you know, the four letters that define who you are. I'm like, yeah, you know, what day of the week is it or what hour of the day is it? I'm a Gemini. I change. Well, Gemini rising. I change. So it's like, What day of the week are you asking whether am I a focused person or am I bouncing off the walls? Am I an intuitive person or am I being Mercury analytical? It's all over the board. So that just is part of the aspect of understanding that stellium and how it rules your life. There are other ways, but they are probably a little bit more subservient to that. So that's a great question, Bianca. I hope that answers it for you. Thanks, guys. I'm going to get out of here so you can have your day back. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.